all right all right welcome back to the channel it's your dad if emigrates here again and we're going to continue from where we left off from the last episode and we are currently accessing the if emigrates account and if i click on accounting we have all this so remember every information we have here are dummies so we need to update it with real life data based on the transactions we've been carrying out so far okay however before we delve into that the current issue here is that if we send money from within our account the account arrangement tends to change and i mentioned that that's not really necessary it shouldn't happen Okay, it's, you're not really doing anything that warrants it to change. So let's actually test this out. So I'm going to check it into my second account, which is this. And I'm going to copy the account number. Come back here, send money, NGN, the account number, send 10,000. And as you can see, it has switched from being engineer here to USD, as you can see. So we don't want that to happen. And it's actually an easy fix. So we can come back to the back end. We're actually going to be visiting the back end this time around. We've not done so in a couple of uh, episodes. So it's currently running. We can leave that running. We can open a new tab. So what I want to do is come back to our queries. We come back to the account queries. And here is the query responsible for listing out the account specific to a user. So as you can see, get account by user ID. So what we want to introduce here is order by. So we are driven by the created ad. So the created ad is always going to be constant. It's going to be based on when the accounts were created. And that's what we want to deal with. So order by created ad, descending order. Yep. Or maybe ascending order. So it's going to be the first created, then the next. So let's make it ascending. So that makes more sense. So the first account you created stays first and so on. And that's all we need to do. Now we can do make SQLC. And that should fix this. So let's test this out again. I believe the server is still running. Yep, it's actually started and it's still running. So again, we want to perform the same operation. So currently USD is staying up front, but because of our change, NGN is now staying up front because it was the first account we created. So let's try to send money into this and see if it changes. So we copy, we come back to the second account, refresh, it's still NGN, send money. So we paste the account, let's send 50,000. Like that and after sending the 50,000 we still maintain our arrangement which is what we want so there's no UI change or anything and that's the first part of the process we have in plan so to the second part we are dealing with the transaction history at the moment all we have here are dummy data and we've been performing transactions however if you come back to the back end we we'll realize that there are some issues so we have the account.grow here we don't have an endpoint just like we had for transfer the other time so we're supposed to create the transaction endpoints but the issue actually comes in where we try to get these transactions because we have different records. So we have transfer records and this is meant to undo transfers. So if you check out the migration table, so we have an um, account setup here and within account setup, we have the entries and the transfers. And the transfer is meant to undo where you transfer from one account to the other. The entries will have been the whole thing we need because the entries is just making provision for money entering or exiting, which is what we want. But the only issue here is that the entry table was only used when we tried to make a transfer. So which means we are not going to get entries for the transfers made. We are not going to see anything for adding money or so. So the first piece we need to make is probably not make fees for now. Let's actually get the transaction endpoint. And coming back here, we can close this for now. We can have server group dot get. And here to get transactions. And we don't have a function for that yet, so we can have a dot get transactions. Cool. So let's create the function. Scroll down. So we have a structure. I can collapse this and just copy the structure. So fun. So get transactions. We have C star gene dot contest. And we have boot. So the first thing first is we want to get the active user because this is going to be an authorized request. So, yep, we are going to copy the first part and remove the rest of it. We don't need that. So we have the user ID here, and this is to verify that the person making the request is the correct user. That's for the part. That's for the first part. Another thing is we want to get transactions for a specific account. And as a result of that, we might have to come back to the front end and define what is our default account. So we can have a check mark on here, making 
kind of okay this is the default account also because the idea is we don't want to show transactions for everything we don't want to show every transactions we only want to show transactions for a specific account so we have a check mark here showing that we are already on this account and if we come here we can click on it to make it the active account yeah we can come up with different us later on but yeah that's the plan and as a result of that if we come back to our back end we are going to make provisions on how we want to get our entries and actually we have some stuff here already if we come back to the entries query we will see that we can insert into entry we can get entry by id we can get entry by account id because again if we come back to the account setup we will see that an entry has an associating account id so for every entry we make it's associated with an account id so that makes sense so what that means is we can get entry for a specific account id which is the one we want to go with and to do that that means we need to specify the request type and specify account id as our parameter so here we can have type the transaction or get transaction request so let's call it get transactions so change this to tap to letter so get transactions requests struct and here we need the account id so it's going to be instead of two account ids where we are specifying and it's going to be a required field so next thing is to bound it and can just copy this all parts so we can close this back again so the info is going to be the request type here and our EDR still remains what it is then we are going to have the validator reason with the request type which is this and every other part should be working well so that's the whole validation done which ensures that we provide the necessary payload so the next thing we want to do is we want to get account by the account id we specified and see if the associating user is the one we have so we can say account comma error equals to a dot server it's actually giving us the idea so a dot server dot queries dot get account by id and we send in the account id into it and if error is not new we can check if there is no record at all which is the rows section so we are checking if this account does not even exist then could show something like could not get an account however again if there's an error in this whole process there is an internal server error which we have this so that's the first part then the second part is to verify that the account does not belong to the user so if the account does not belong to you you shouldn't have access to see it so let's do that so if account.userid is not equivalent to the user id then could not get account that's valid so the next thing is to get entries where the account is the account id so we can have um, transactions which is this we don't have a record for this so instead we use get entries entry by account id and here we can have the info dots info dot account id okay so now these are transactions okay and here we can check if error is not new and return this and finally we can do c.json this we don't have to define a struct to undo this we can just return our transactions and that should work and that's all we need to do to get our transactions let's test this before going to the front end to implement it if we would have to in this episode because yeah let's make it short so maybe we'll just make this a back-end flow then the next one will be us coming to the front end to actually implement it by the way we've actually two things already the uh, arrangement for accounts and now the endpoint to get transactions but before we round up for today's episode let's test this endpoint so here is the endpoint and we can come back to postman let's find it so here are the records we have so far let's get in another one so we can duplicate it so we can duplicate the get account ctrl d and make this get transactions so this is going to be transactions like that and um, this requires authorization so if we are logged in we can copy our authorization let's just log in again so we have the authorization token come back to get transactions save things come back to authorization get the bearer token and paste here so let's try to make the requests so it's going to complain that we need to provide the body which we can so now we've provided the body without the required parameters so let's see what happens so this time around is telling us that we need to provide the account id and based on the logged in user that's been great we have access to two types of accounts let's verify it so let's see what this is so this is account one and i believe this is a different rate so again we would have to have our avatar here that way wherever we are we always know who is logged in so let's 
inspect SGET console, clear this out network. Let's refresh. So the accounts ID1 and ID2. So I believe ID1 is for the NGN and ID2 is for the USD. Okay, makes sense. So let's come back to Postman. So we have to provide account ID here. And let's assume we provided theory, which is not part of the account ID that the use belongs to the user, what happens? And as you can see, could not get account, which makes sense. And this should be true, which is for USD transactions. Let's see all the entries for it. And voila, we get the entries for it. So the thing about the entries is that you get both the positive entry and the negative entry, as you can see. So let's see the entries for the NGN account, which is account one. So these are the entries, positive and negative. So this was a credit and that way we are able to verify if it was a credit uh, entry or a debit entry. So that's a test in terms of transaction. The only issue we have now is if we come back to the back end and for our send money or add money rather. So transfer is working well, which is what makes use of the entries. The add money is not uh, doing entirely what we want. So we are able to create money record, which is meant to kind of manage our ad money process because it's not going to be immediate. However, for when the ad money is complete, we should also have entry showing that, okay, there's a money inside the account. And we can quickly do that by creating the, an entry record here. So let's quickly do that. But another thing you should note is that once you've started creating multiple records that can affect each other, then you probably want to venture into transactions. So what we have for the ad money here has nothing to do with transaction, but it's going to be better to use transactions. So I won't bother doing that. We've already seen how to do it already. However, what I'll just do is to ensure that we have entries for when we are adding money. And we've done this in the transfer side. So let's make use of that as a reference. So transfer section, the transfer requests, and let's take a look at the transfer TS. So here is it. So here is what the params to create an entry looks like. So all we have to do is copy this. That's all we need. Come back to the account. Come back to add money. So at this point where we are updating the account, we can also add the entry for add money. So this is going to be db dot create entry params. So the account ID we are dealing with this time around, let's see. So that's accounts and we can do account dot ID. Then the amount we are dealing with, we have obj dot amount. And we have that. So entry in, we can just say results. We don't really need the result anyways. So we can use underscore and we can use arrow. And this is going to be just like we've done a.server.queries entries. So create entry, we have this. Or if error is not new, we're not just returning error in this case, we are returning an issue. So technically, it's meant to just return error and draw back every record we've created if there's an issue. But for this, we're just going to have C dot the JSON internal server error because obviously it's an internal server error if we are unable to create the entry record, there will return operation. So that's about that. That's us making sure that our ad money flow also has a transaction entry. And we're good on that note. However, another thing we're going to have as an issue in the future is if our entry record becomes so much because currently we've not implemented pagination. That's going to be for the future. So yeah, we've set up our backend to be able to handle transactions. I'm going to push the updated code so you can check it out later. And I'll see you in the next episode for the front-end uh, update. Bye for now.